Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this video, we'll study the detailed structure of the sporophyte of the pteridophyte. And we are talking about the example that is of the fern. So when we say fern, which is a macrophyllous pteridophyte, that means the leaves are bigger leaves and the dominant stage is the sporophyte. So we are talking about the sporophyte. The plant which is visible to us has stem which is underground and normally this is the stem, it goes vertically down and it is called the rhizome. So this is the underground stem and it is the rhizome. It is called the vertical rhizome and this vertical rhizome is covered with scales and these scales they are called the remanda. So these scales are remanda. The roots arise from the stem that means they are adventitious roots. So from here we would find these adventitious roots arising. That means the part of the plant or sporophyte which is visible to us is only the leafy part. Stem is underground, the roots are adventitious arising from this underground stem. Now the upper part which is visible, we find that there are these long large leaves and the younger leaves they remain coiled. The leaves are known as fronds so this structure which we are drawing is actually the leaf which is called the frond. Now these leaves are pinnately compound and they can be unipinnate or even bipinnate. So what is visible to us are these leaflets which are seen here and these leaves are larger leaves and that's why we have placed it under macrophyllous pteridophyte. The younger leaves would have these structures that means the fronds which are coiled or folded. During reproductive season below these leaves that means on the underside of this leaf the spore producing structures would be formed. So these structures which we have drawn are the leaflets and they are the sporophylls. So the leaves, because they are going to produce spores, so we call them sporophylls. Now let us see the leaf when the reproductive season is there. So if we draw one such leaflet on the underside, that means we are seeing it from the lower side or ventral side, we find that there are some brown colored circular patches which are seen all along the margin and these structures they are called the sori. Singular is a sorus and these are the structures where we have many sporangia. So if we enlarge one sorus, before we draw the diagram we need to understand how exactly the structure is going to be. So if this is the leaflet which is like flat, this is the upper or the dorsal surface, this is the lower surface and these circular patches they are on the margin on the lower side. So if we cut the leaf like this to see the section then what is going to be visible to us? Here we will find the epidermis and then we will find this sorus which is on the lower side. So if we enlarge a sorus this is the epidermis part. So this is the leafy part which is visible. This is the upper epidermis and in the middle part we find that there is a swollen structure. Here there is a swollen part to which the sporangia would be attached and here on the lower side there is an umbrella like structure which is sort of a protective structure and this protective structure is called the inducium. So this is the inducium and this is the leaf surface. Now Attached to the swollen part, we find many sporangia. Each sporangium has a stalk 
and a large sporangium in which the spore would be produced or a capsule like structure. So this is a sporangium and there are many such sporangia which are present attached to this swollen part. And inside each sporangium there would be spores produced. So this one structure is a sorus. And these structures would appear only during the reproductive season. So when the spore formation season uh, reaches, that is the time this structure is seen. Now if this structure is the sporangium. Now if we enlarge the sporangium, we find that there is a stalk. So if we draw this stalk, say this is the stalk. Normally the stalk is made up of two to three thick walled cells. So this part is the stalk and attached to the stalk is a big capsule. Now here is this structure where the spores would be produced. The wall of this sac is made up of two types of cells. Most of the cells they are thick walled and they make the layer which is called the annulus. So these are all thick wall cells. Here also thick wall cells. And because they are thick walls, they are not going to show any kind of dehiscence or rupture. So this is the annulus. There are few cells which are thin wall as compared to the cells of the annulus. These are little longish cells and they are thin wall. So if you look at it, we can differentiate between these thick wall cells that is annulus and thin wall. This layer, a small area where thin wall cells are present is known as the stomium. This is the place from where the sporangium is going to rupture. Now inside the sporangium are present the spore mother cells. These are spore mother cells. Spore mother cells are diploid. That means the sporophyte is a diploid plant. It produces the sporangia during breeding season or reproductive season. Inside the sporangium are present these spore mother cells. So if I draw this one spore mother cell which is a diploid cell, it is going to undergo meiosis to produce four haploid spores. So these are spores which are haploid and then they would separate. Initially they may remain attached but then they are going to separate. The spores because they are produced due to this meiotic division, the spores are haploid and these spores on germination would give rise to the gametophyte which is the heart shaped prothallus. The structure of this gametophyte we will discuss in the next video but here the spores which are produced they all can be identical or they can be different also. That means the spores if they are identical let me write it here the spores if they are all identical. Then the condition is known as homosporous. Homosporous. Most of the pteridophytes are homosporous. So this is the most common case that is in most pteridophytes. And if the spores are different, then the condition, that means if they are different, then the condition is known as heterosporous. And heterosporous condition is seen specially in, so here I am writing the examples, that is Selaginella and Salvinia. In these two types of pteridophytes, we find heterosporous condition, but most of the pteridophytes, they are homosporous. And the spore which is produced is inside the sporangium 
from the spore mother cell which undergoes a meiotic division. All these sporangia grow on the underside of the leaf in a structure which is called the sodas. And this umbrella-like structure, it actually protects all these sporangia. So this is the leaflet under which on the margin we find these sori in which these spore, uh, in this the spore formation takes place. The spores, they fall on the soil and they germinate to give rise to this gametophyte. So gametophyte is going to grow separately by the germination of spores. This is the gametophyte which will be formed and on the gametophyte we will have the gamete producing structures that means sex organs. It will produce those gametes. Fertilization would take place to form a zygote and that zygote will then give rise to this. So this link we will see when we talk about the complete life cycle. But here we are talking about the sporophyte which is the dominant stage of the life cycle of pteridophyte and we have seen that the spores are formed and on germination they are going to give rise to the gametophyte. Now in the next video we will talk about how this gametophyte looks, where are the antheridia and archegonia and then we will take up the further development of the, the gametophyte.